Well, hello and welcome. Today, we're jumping into part two of the How to Drift in Car X Drift Racing. Um, we're just going to be pretty much starting off where we left off last time. Uh, last time, we were talking about the controls, and nothing has changed in terms of controls. This is all the same. It's 360 degrees, 360 from here all the way down to here. Um, we have a throttle uh, slider on the right, um, your handbrake, your brake, your shifting buttons, and like I said before, minimap doesn't really matter. And personally, for me, ow, that was painful, um, <laughs> my wrist popped really hard. Personally, for me, I don't need the map at all, but I'm just leaving it on just for now, just because I'm not going to go turn it off. <laughs> and uh, drifting in first person, like this. Or should I say in the cockpit? Um, it's just the best thing that you can do for now. Just while you learn to drift. I Back in the day, I learned no steering assist from hood. That's because we didn't have this view yet. You guys remember? Comments if you uh, played the game before cockpit and stuff came in. I, I played way back and it was just like, you had a skyline. Or should I say an R34 and you could tune and everything and do whatever you wanted and I don't I don't know, it was cool stuff. Um we are gonna just jump in here. So the first thing that you're gonna need to know is that well one, this is the 160 horsepower Corolla that I was using as I showed in part one. And look at that. Look how easily that kicked out. And the main trick is weight transfer. There's different ways of doing weight transfer for certain vehicles. And this part of the tutorial is for rear wheel drive. And sometimes it will apply for front wheel drive, but I will have separate videos for that. And also for all wheel drive. Um, but pretty much you wanna steer away from where you wanna go. I wanna go left, so I wanna go flick right, and then start turning in, and start counter steering. I used to just do like really hard aggressive counter steers like that, and not so recently I really start mastering the precision on the steering. That uh, it's really come in handy for me. A lot cleaner looking. And don't worry about gears. In this car, just try and stick in second or third. And make sure the shifting point is accessible. Oh crap, see I messed up. Uh, make sure the shifting point's easy to get to, easy, easy to get to from uh, the brake slash handbrake. Because, uh, yeah. So like I said before, in case you forget from the first part, is I have the home button for my device on my right thumb. For some reason, the sensitivity is like, overly sensitive when I have it facing the other way. Or it's like got a big dead zone and then it's really sensitive. And then this way it's pretty relatively even. Come on. <laughs> Slightly, oh, I was in fourth. I thought I was in third. Darn. So here's another good example point. You're going to turn away. And then as soon as the weight starts going that way, you're going to flick it in hard. Um, and that's just how I drift in general. And sometimes if you want, like a car like this, not this is not the best car, it's better to do in drift spec cars. But you can hit the brake, as I did not demonstrate there. But you can hit the brake, I mean just by watching, you can see, as I hit the brake, right as the weight starts transferring. I was at the top of a second, so it doesn't work. Other thing is you have to make sure you're in the right gear. You can't be redlining certain gear the whole time. Like, see, if I'm like, like this, you're not going to really drift. You might get kick out a tiny bit, but it's just gonna die. So you have to really get used to your speeds per gear. You really want to find out where your certain gears end. Uh, like if your first gear ends at 35 miles per hour, you know that you can't drift anything more than going to like 30 or something. Um, if second gear is 50, you know that you can't drift going any faster than uh, 45 or something like that. They're just like little tricks for you to get used to at the beginning. And, uh, 
you just drop the brake when you <laughs> drop the brake. No, <laughs> um, when you hit the brake or whatever, and you're not oversteering enough, and you're gonna plow into something. Let's say not here, but there'll be sometimes where you'll need the handbrake too. Like that. Well, that was not my proudest. Still, be honest. So, sorry, I haven't even talked about the throttle at all yet. Um, so like I said, for initiating drifts, uh, handbrake, not so important, mainly weight transfer. That's just the key to drifting in my book. Like, I don't care how many people say use the handbrake, that's not for me. This, this is like the easiest thing I can do, is just be like, flick. So, things you should know about using the throttle. I am in a low-powered vehicle, which is very, very good to learn how to drift in because you don't get that much wheel spin and you don't have to worry about the car kicking out too much. Um, so first things first, you want to see how much wheel spin you can actually get. So this is just also for referencing for your gears to know how wide your gears are and whatnot. So you a little bit, and you can see my first gear stops at 30 miles per hour, or that's when I'm redlining, or you know, hitting the rev limiter. Which, that means the first gear is pretty much useless, and even doing donuts, it's kind of obnoxious trying to use it. As I will demonstrate here, is it's like already wanting to like end the donut because it's just redlining the whole time. But besides that, um, oops, let's not kill our frames. Um, yeah, what was I going to say? Um, so, like I said, you want to find your gears. And this this car is a four speed. You can see I'm going to go up to third, fourth, and that's it. I'm going to just try and get some wheel spin from second. And that's kind of the main way to determine. If your car has good power, you can spin the wheels from second and continue going. Like that, it pretty much died out. And, uh... That's how you know it's low powered. So when it's a low powered vehicle like this, you can pretty much just stay full throttle around these corners and just get used to counter steering. And uh, there's good areas to practice drifting. Uh, I had made a video on that, but I accidentally deleted it. Um, so I'm gonna go make that again soon. Like over here, this big wide open area, you can even just learn on the track. It's not that bad. Um, initiation into corners is very important. Not just like how to initiate, but like where you initiate too. Personally, I'm a uh, inside line drifter, and uh, you know some people like go run the outside line, but not me. And yeah. Um, so just start with a low-powered vehicle, and throttle won't be important. And um, yeah. So just go practice for now, low power, rear wheel drive, and just mess around, do donuts, whatever the heck you want, and uh, get used to the steering. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next part, and good luck for your practicing. Till then, see ya.